In this lesson, we're comparing linear, exponential, and quadratic functions. So let's go ahead and get started. Since this video is an overview of linear, quadratic, and exponential functions, we're simply comparing the three functions to see how the key features relate and how they differ. So if you're not familiar with either one, linear, quadratic, exponential, or all of them, uh, please see these videos to understand uh, more of the key features of each function. As mentioned, we're simply comparing the three functions here. So here we have the three functions and we're going to compare the equations, the graphs, and the patterns. So the equation for a linear function is y equals mx plus b. Um, you may know this as slope intercept form where m is the slope and b is your y intercept. Here's an example of an equation uh, that is a linear function. The graph of a linear function is a straight line. So we have a graph here. The pattern of a linear function. So if you have a table, there's a constant first difference. And what that means is you look at your y value and you're seeing how you're looking at basically the pattern of the y, the y value. And so here we're subtracting three uh, from each one. So that is a constant uh, change of the same uh, number there. With quadratic functions, we have three different types of form, three different forms. We have uh, the standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is an example in standard form. So with quadratics, you have that x squared there. Vertex, you have y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And you have an example here of vertex form. Uh, the one and the negative three will be your h and k, and that would be the vertex. Um, in this case, your a is in front of the parentheses, whereas in standard, the a is right next to that x squared. Then we have the factored form here, and this is an example of factored form. So with quadratics, you have a squared term, linear, uh, you have a degree of one. So 4x for uh, linear, so highest degree is one. And then quadratic, your highest degree would be, uh, would be two. The graph is a U-shaped graph here that is called a parabola. And to, fit, to if you're looking at a table, the constant second difference is how you will identify the quadratic function. I have an example here. So as you can see, um, from 8 to negative 5, you're adding 3. From negative 5 to 0, you're adding 5. And then from 0 to 7, you're adding 7. But the second difference is the same, where you see the plus 2 here. So from 3 to 5, you're adding 2. And from 5 to 7, you're adding 2. So that is what you would call the second difference. It could be positive or negative, but it should be the same number. And that lets you know that that is a quadratic function. Next, we have exponential form, um, y equals a times b to the x power. Sometimes you will not see the a, but the a is the y-intercept. Um, b is the growth or decay, or it is um, the common ratio. And x is your exponent. So we can also put common ratio here. An example, um, y equals 6 times 2 to the x. In this case, 6 would be the a or the y-intercept. And b would be the common ratio. And then, of course, you have your x for the exponent. The graph looks like this. Um, it's kind of a, it's called an exponential graph. So it slowly um, goes towards the x-axis and it goes up in this case. So that's the shape of it. It's called this exponential and instead of a constant difference first to second you have a constant ratio so whereas with the linear and quadratic you're adding or subtracting the same number um, with exponential you're either multiplying or dividing the same number and for all three you're looking at your y values and so here from negative two to negative eight you're multiplying by four and so forth so here with exponential you're either multiplying or uh, dividing your y value there. Um, quadratic, you're adding or it could be a subtracting. Um, the second difference should be the uh, what you're looking for. And then with the linear, you're seeing that pattern of adding or subtracting the same number looking at your y value there. 
So now I would like for you to take a look at these three tables here. It says determine whether each table represents a linear, quadratic, or exponential function. So go ahead and just pause the video and, and try these problems on your own. All right, so the first one we have here is a quadratic function because the second difference is the same. We're adding two here. The second one is linear because you're adding six. It's the same constant rate there. And then the third one here, you're multiplying by the same number. So that would be exponential. Hopefully you got them correct. Let's take a look at a few more key features and compare the graphs as well. So the shape of a linear function, of course, is a line. The rate of change is always constant. You're constantly adding or subtracting the same number. Uh, you have zero, one, or infinite amount of x-intercepts, and I'll show you what that means when I show you the graph. As far as y-intercepts, you will have just one y-intercept. For your vertex or vertices, you're not going to have any because when you think about uh, a vertex, um, that is a change in direction of the graph. So with the line, the graph is not going to change directions. It's going to be going in the same direction. The domain is all real numbers, and what you see in red, we read that as um, x um, is such that it's the element of all real numbers. So um, you may see this uh, symbol here, and that stands for all real numbers, but the domain is always all real numbers. Uh, the range is y such that y is an element of all real numbers, or um, it is equal to some constant. And so I will show you what that means on the graph down here. All right, so here um, we have a graph. This horizontal graph has no x-intercept. And uh, the range will actually be some constant because it crosses the y-axis. Uh, right here, it looks like at negative 4. So um, that graph goes in both directions endlessly, but there, there's no x-intercept, so that constant that range would be at y equals 4. Um, you have one x and one y intercept for this graph right here. All right, and then um, the infinite amount of x intercepts is where that graph crosses uh, the x axis. And so it crosses the x axis an infinite amount of times for this graph right here. All right, so let's take a look at quadratic functions. As mentioned earlier, I told you that that is a U-shaped graph. That is a parabola. Rate of change is not constant. It can have zero, one, or two solutions. Um, and remember, solutions are the same as x-intercepts for a quadratic function. Only one y-intercept. It does have a vertex because that U-shaped graph is going to change directions, right? Domain, all real numbers. Range is y is such that is equal to some, greater than or equal to some constant or less than or equal to some constant. So here are some graphs uh, for quadratics. Um, right here you have two solutions, meaning um, where your graph crosses the x-axis or you could call them x-intercepts. And it crosses the y-axis once, so one y-intercept. For this graph here, you have one solution or one x-intercept, same thing. And then at the bottom here, you have no solution, no x-intercepts, so that, because that graph does not cross the x-axis. And last, we have the exponential function. That shape is called exponential. It's an exponential shape. Um, rate of change is not constant, so the only constant rate of change would be the linear uh, function there x-intercepts will be either 0 or 1, 1 y-intercept, no vertices because it doesn't change directions like the parabola does. Um, so if you notice here with the parabola, it starts going down for left to right and then it goes up. Uh, for linear functions, the graph is aligned. It doesn't do that. Same thing with exponential. Um, and again, your domain is all real numbers. So for all three functions, your domain is all real numbers. And the only difference with the range for the exponential function is that you don't have this equal to sign underneath. So um, y is greater than some constant or y is less than some constant. It's not going to be equal to because it's not going to touch that, um, that value there. All right, so we have a graph here. 
so here you have a standard graph for uh, exponential function and the y-intercept is at 0, 1. You have one y-intercept here. And then here at the bottom, you have another um, example of uh, exponential function here. So these are just some examples there. So for this example here, I would like for you to try on your own. Uh, I, would like you, I would like for you to identify whether the key features indicate that the model is linear, quadratic, or exponential. It could be one uh, of the functions or it could be all of them. So go ahead and pause the video and see which features apply to each function. Here are your answers here. Hopefully you got them correct. Go ahead and pause the video to check your answers. If you did not get some of them correct, uh, perhaps you should go back and rewind the video and look at some of those key features if you did not write them down. So go ahead and pause and check your answers. Now we're looking at recognizing functions from verbal descriptions or perhaps real life situations. And so a linear function, if you have, uh, if the object or something is moving at a constant speed, that's one way you could recognize a linear function. If you're adding or subtracting the same amount over a period of time, or uh, if you're growing at a constant rate there. Quadratic functions, if you have a falling object, uh, if you're throwing a ball, so remember the shape of the graph is a parabola, and if you throw a ball, it kind of it arc, arches up and then falls down, so that would be a quadratic. And then if you're launching a rocket, so again, that parabola uh, shape there. Exponential functions, uh, you're looking at the prop population growth or decay over, over time. Uh, and another example could be a compound interest problem or a depreciating car, or any type of depreciating um, item. And remember, uh, you're either multiplying or dividing with exponential functions. And so that's a good way that you can kind of figure out if it's uh, exponential or not. But I have a few problems at the bottom here. These are the last ones. Um, just check whether the model would be linear, quadratic, or exponential. These are real life situations. So go ahead and see if you can figure out um, which model would, would uh, match the real life context. So go ahead and pause the video and try these last problems on your own. All right, so check your answers here. Hopefully you got them correct. If not, go back and analyze uh, the, the problems or not the problems, the, the features here at the top. And again, maybe go back and rewind the video and see more of the key features uh, of linear, quadratic, or exponential functions. But this is the last problem, so hopefully you got them correct. And once again, if not, go back and try to see why you missed them. So we reached the end of our lesson. I want to thank you for learning with me some related videos, our introduction to quadratic functions or constructing exponential functions, or is this a linear function? If you haven't already, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And once again, I want to thank you for learning with me.